Well, bicycling and walking are becoming uh, more important uh, uh, parts of our transportation system. It's local governments and it's businesses that are, that are providing incentives for employees not to drive their car by themselves. Well, this is, this is a, so we've got men's and women's showers at Clockwork. We built these in when we renovated the building knowing that we wanted to support bicycling. There's a whole cycling culture out there. There's a whole cycling culture emerging within the business. Being in Minneapolis as a community, uh, a lot of people ride bikes. So we've just, um, over the years, encouraged people to ride their bikes to work. And it's really fed the culture here. Well, the bike boulevards are awesome. And it's just a really good spot, not only because you get your own bike lane, but you also get all those other people that are cycling on there. And it's a good old safety in numbers. So anytime you have a bike lane or a bike boulevard, it is going to be a safer spot because there's going to be more people there. Oftentimes, especially if it's only like a, a four or five mile commute, it ends up not really adding any time to the distance that you're going. The fact is that we have underinvested. In Minnesota, we have used about a quarter of a billion dollars in federal funds for alternative transportation things over nearly 20 years. That may seem like a lot of money, but in 2010 alone, our highway trust fund was over one and a half billion dollars, more than six times as much as what we spent in 20 years on bicycling and walking. Driving is always going to be a big part of our transportation system, but uh, if, if you can reduce it fractionally along the edges, you're going to have a more efficient system.